These are your time tracking settings for LMN time. The first option up here has to do with the short name for jobs. Now your short name is the name that's going to show up on your employee's phone, the name of the job. So when they go to pick a job, this is what's going to show up. Now you can set this to whatever you want, but LMN time will try to create one for you by default. And it's asking you whether you want to use the project name, the address, or the customer name. Most people don't choose customer name because customers can have multiple jobs uh, under the same customer. So generally you'd choose project, name, or job site address as a unique way to identify a job. Next option asks you if you want to allow your staff to clock out at a time that's in the future. So if it's 4.30, the staff could override their clock and set their clock out time to 5 o'clock at night. Generally, people are going to leave this at not allowed. This isn't something that's very typical. There's very few good reasons you'd want to do this, but you can if you want. Next option says highlight payroll review when an employee's daily hours exceed and then a set number of hours here. What's going to happen here is if your employees clock in over this many hours, mine says 12, I'm going to get a payroll report or a warning that uh, tells me all the people who've clocked over 12 hours in a day. So if you have an overtime threshold, say at eight hours a day, you can set this to eight and you'll get a warning anytime someone goes into overtime. Next is default lunchtime. So the crews are gonna add their lunch deduction when they go to submit their timesheets. And this is the default time that's gonna show up for their lunch. So try to find the time where most of your crews break for lunch. They can change this on any given timesheet to reflect their accurate lunchtime. Over on the right hand side, it asks you by default whether you want to track hours on your jobs by cost codes or work areas. Cost codes are typically less detail. You could have different work areas like front patio, back patio, uh, retaining wall, but maybe they all come back to the, the cost code of hardscapes. So cost codes are going to be simpler for your crews to track, less information. It's going to be less information for you at the office. However, when you try to get too detailed when you're tracking tasks on a job, if we're going to track the front patio, the back patio, the retaining wall all separately, that means anytime people are working on those unique things, they're going to have to switch tasks and make sure they're clocked under the right one. So the more tasks you have, the more complicated it is for your guys in the field. Uh, I'd recommend starting with work areas and services, see how it is. You can make as, as many or as few as you want on each job. Start there, and if you want to back it up to cost codes, you can do so. Next option asks you if you want to prompt the user to enter comments every time they clock out of a task. And basically it's a comment field to say, what did you do here? It's a good idea to keep this on. Uh, that way you'll get great comments and notes each time your crew finishes a task on a timesheet. You don't have to set this to on or yes, but you can if you want. The one after says, do you want to allow your crews to leave the timesheet notes blank? So this gives them the option. The first one says, I'm going to prompt them to enter notes. The second one says, do I allow them to leave the notes blank or not? You can say yes, allow the user to skip notes so they can leave it blank. Or you can say no, make sure that my staff enter notes each and every time they're done a task. It's a good idea to keep notes. When you look back at your timesheets and you look at the job review screen, those notes are going to show up there. It's a nice breakdown of what's been happening. And the last option here says, ensure that every task that you create for a job is assigned an accounting cost code. So if you're doing detailed job costing in QuickBooks or your accounting, this is a must have. You definitely want this on to enforce cost codes. If you're only using element time for payroll and you're not that interested in job costing through your accounting, then you could say, no, I don't use cost codes and it'll still track the hours, but it won't require that each job has been assigned an accounting cost code.